Hello, every pony. It's Lotus Moon. I do hope you've been enjoying all my readings so far. And this next one, well, it's kind of... I don't want to say unorthodox, but it is different from normal, I guess. And this story is titled All That Lingers, and it was written by Ice Star. I won't spoil the coupling in it, so without further ado, please enjoy. All That Lingers Written by Ice Star Chapters 1 through 10 She found him in the hall that she thought was the most forsaken of any. There, in the back of the castle, District sat in the shadow of the proud but kind edifice, and the full moon would hang in the air in just the right place, like the crown jewel of the night sky. Even if Luna, as distant as she was in Canterlot, decided to slack on anything, the scene of the moon above the midnight sky and the shadows of distant mountains that could be seen from this lonely hall and balcony always felt perfect. He was admiring the stars and stood like he was waiting for company. Not the company one ached for, no, not that, but some pony to accompany them on a garden stroll if they were to just ask. Her legs ached for dancing. The crystal ball had passed a few months ago and she had not and she had not danced. She never danced. She loved to dance. But she saw Sombra there, standing with the moonlight filtering through him and saying nothing. Cool air from outside and a dozen little snowflakes shining in the dark pouring into the hallway. They danced on the night breeze. Sombra stood there comfortably still, knowing something and waiting. Can't Cadence left. Sombra knew she would return. She returned on a second night, her crystal coat glittering like tears and still like it was she who was the ghost and he who was the god. Why? It was all she had asked him. He finally looked away from the clouds covering the moon. The simple movement of the sky seemed to make him vanish, and calmly rested his red eyes on her, and they looked at her, simply as though she was a passing friend, or at the very least, some pony that he knew well enough, and there was no sign of corruption in them. I don't think there was anywhere else for me to go. Why do you think I'm here? She looked at the ghost, with nothing but disgust, to haunt me. He didn't smile, but there was life in his eyes that the rest of him didn't have, and the mystery as well. In the darkness, Cadence could see that he did not have a crystal coat or eyes. Nothing marked him as having anything to do with the ponies he once enslaved only a fuzzy winter coat, visible no matter how pale his form was, suggested anything to do with the North. And that's a shame. I don't, I don't plan on doing any haunting. Why not? Summer's gaze changed and she saw mischief in his eyes. How on earth does haunting sound worthwhile? Aren't there better things to do than wallowing in grief over something lost? Was that a knowing look in his eye? Or had he always had that? Cadence watched him somberly, quietly. She wanted to shiver at something cold that wasn't there. Then, if you aren't here to stalk me and, and try to proclaim yourself victorious when you lost the entire empire already, then what do you want? She did not manage looks of suspicion well. 
Sombra, and Ghost of the Castle, managed a small shrug under his crimson, crimson cape. Trimmed with wet, warm fur. It was probably only as real as he was. Are you going to try and ignore me? She who visits twice? He kept a neutral expression, but his tone had some warmth. I might, Caden said lovely, standing straighter and taking one step one small step away from him. Her gold shoes felt heavier than usual. She still thought of the ball, of everything else, everything but the kingdoms and goddesses and her subjects. You couldn't ignore me if you tried, Sombra said, stoic expression fading once to allow a momentary wry look. But I have to say, you're dreadfully boring and standing here is certainly worthwhile, isn't it? If I were still alive, I'd be shivering. A sarcastic ghost, Caden shrank into the hall shadows. Would it always be the same hall with him? You're not going to be taking the heart. It was a simple and distant response. And while odd coming from her, she wanted to be distant with him and regal. She wanted to be a princess with him when all his gaze said was that she wasn't. Even if she wanted, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Death does that, he said dryly. All right, she breathed, relaxing slightly. Then what is it that the newest resident of the Crystal Empire wants to do? Her smile was small and forced. I miss dancing. Those three words shatter the night, and Cadence did a double take as she looked at King Sombra, her worriness broken and replaced with confusion. Dancing? She repeated numbly. He just nodded, eyes never leaving her. Would you care to? He nonchalantly held out a huff. Reluctantly, with slight disgust still visible, Cadence took his cold huff in her own with a mechanical attempt at natural grace. She'd shown a particular forgettable forgettable guest. She too felt stiff with his hoof holding hers and simply being out of practice as if there were anything simple about it. Cadence greeted him silently with her presence the next night in the same hall. Sombra was waiting and his eyes always found her quickly it seemed. He didn't smile. Hello, she said quietly. It was so obvious that things would be stilted and awkward between them if, well, if this were to keep up. Hello yourself, princess. Kaden stood a little closer to Sombra than she would have liked and ruffled her feathers with clear discomfort. Empress, she corrected with a cool tone that didn't suit her. I'm an empress now. An empress who speaks casually with me. She paused. Do you even know my name? He gave her a cautious sideways glance, and Cadence tried to remember what it was like having some pony who was taller than her. Not since she last saw Celestia and Luna. I might. It's Mia Mori Cadenza. She replied, and this time, Sombra noted that she sounded slightly sheepish beneath her crystalline looks. I think that I'll be calling you Cadence. They stood next to one another in motionlessness, emotionless silence, moonlight pouring over them both. 
dancing, huh? She sounded like she hadn't spoken so freely in ages. Somber nodded quietly. I used to do it quite often. Really? She tried to smile, and it did not look natural. She felt like some pony trying to cut a snowflake out of rigid ice. Sombra nodded again. What about you? All you goddesses were always something else before you gained such an everlasting life. What were you? A pegasus. And aren't you immortal now, Sombra? Saying his name without title or venom felt strangely intimate. When was the last time it was spoken? I suppose, he said with disinterest, and when I was asking you what you were, I was asking about your profession. What kind of apprentice were you? Cadence looked at her hooves and muttered something Summer didn't hear, and he probably gave her another one of his curious looks that was best described as cat-like. What was that, dear Cadence? I'm afraid I can't hear you. Sighing, Cadence spoke up. I was in a garbage band and... I was in a garage band and played bass. Somber blinked in confusion and made a small noise in the back of his throat. You did what at whose base? Cadence's forehoof covered her smile before her not quite right smile was even visible. It'd take a lot of explaining. <laughs> Casual speech poured from her mouth as awkward as their dancing had been. This use would robe this use will rob a pony of expertise in the strangest things. I'm not sure you'd understand it. Why not? Sombra said, arching an eyebrow. You're... Um... Old? Sombra scowled and looked down at her, cold and moving. Old. I'll have you know that I was only 32 when I died. If you don't count my time trapped in the ice. Cadence was quiet for a long while. Oh, I'm sorry. That is very young. Sombra snorted. And now you have seen the error of your ways. Don't you know how to keep your spirits high, pink one? Now it was Cadence's turn to snort. Pink one? That's certainly new. I can't say any pony has given me a nickname in a while. Isn't it a little weird? To you, that a gloomy ghost is telling me to lighten up. You must admit, you are rather somber. Cadence chose to answer with a small nod and looked away from her ghostly companion. What about you? What was it that you used to do? Sombra sighed and looked at something beyond the horizon. Before everything, I was a duke's bastard son that had the sense to walk out on him and everything and every pony without a word. I was too young for anything on my own, so I followed my heart. You became a tyrant? An actor, actually. The Crystal Empire used to have a great tradition of theater. For the first time since they'd known one another, Cadence's smile, Cadence's smile was as it should be. You were an actor? What roles did you play? Let me guess, the hero, for irony's sake? Well, Summer began placing a cold forehoof on her crystalline withers to signal that to signal the start of his interruption. 
I was a child actor, so I used usually played female roles. Cadence blinked. But you have such a deep voice. He gave her a disgruntled look. I didn't always. Now, may I finish? She nodded, intrigue showing in her purple eyes. Can I ask you one last question first? Sombra nodded, looking completely relaxed. Yes, what is it that you wish to know then? Why do you say that the Empire had a proud tradition of theater? As its ruler, I think I would have noticed if there was a single theater or play that came from the Empire. It used to, Sombra replied shortly, stepping away from her and into the shadows of the night. What happened? Sombra's crimson glare found her from the dark. I did. Sombra's crimson glare found her from the dark. I did. Raising a shaking forehoof to her chest, Cadence took a deep breath and pushed back an invisible weight as the shadows around her flickered. The moon's light could be obscured. After all, a cloud outside did the trick. The hall grew colder as the goddess and the ghost stared across the windows light at each other, each residing in the shadow's house. What? What? It was all Cadence could manage. I didn't stay an actor forever, Cadence. Things happen. He sighed and then added, and things fall apart. Cadence nodded and not emptily. She knew his words. She lived them. And then, Sombra continued, There are just some ponies. Cadence was sure she heard him swallow and his voice catch. Her ears were keen. There are some ponies who just never take no for an answer. The next deep breath Cadence took was heard by both and a sound swept around the dark corridor while the mare who took it shook. She did not know what he meant, but she could guess. Part of her did not want to know. So, she stepped into the moonlight, her form glittering like a diamond and extended her forehoof into the shadows where she knew he, would, he stood waiting. Would you honor me with a second dance? Sombra's ghost limb Sombra's ghostly limbs slipped into hers and she pulled him into the light. Can you still do magic? Cadence whispered in Sombra's ear as she followed his steps. No. I would need my horn for that. I'm barely physically, as you can tell. He responded, voice low as his as he sidestepped a moonbeam. For them, it was another moonlit night. It was the same hall and the same two faces, theirs. Do you miss it? Not particularly. I was an actor in another, more serious costume that had a cape and a crown. I had never been a sorcerer. Corruption, he speaks the word with particular disgust, as though there's something about it he wants to dodge. Was a state, a strange experience for me, but I'm innocent of nothing. We both know that. She nodded into his wither. Were you a hedonist in life then? Maybe as a cult, but I was always, I've always been merry. You strike me as one who have the inclination, no? Maybe I did at one point, 
Cadence whispered, holding on to Sombra. I don't know anymore. Sombra didn't say anything. No pony has called you Cadence in some time. Just my aunties, she mumbled, looking away. Twilight, too. I haven't seen her in... Sombra raised an eyebrow. A cousin, I presume? The... He paused, lost in thought. Purple unicorn, yes? Poorly styled mane? Sombra felt Cadence nod. She's taller now, and she has wings and a castle. And everything. Cadence was relieved when Sombra didn't respond with another question about everything. Or something she didn't like answering. Even if she did talk about it. You must have to keep track of a lot of names then. More than I did. I didn't care much about what I called any pony, dear pink one. They aren't any servants. Or at least none in the castle. Not anymore. Not after. It was a joke. You haven't talked to any pony in a while, have you? No. Cadence whimpered. Everything feels cold. Perhaps because you're embracing a dead stallion. Cadence's laughter sound too much like crying, but at least Sombra never let go. Cadence's hooves hurt from the night's dancing, and laying on the floor wasn't as cold as Sombra's deftly cold touch, even if she preferred the latter. Her mane was no longer perfectly and rigidly curled in the crystalline way, and fell loose and sparkling as tresses behind her like they once had before she ever adopted the styles of her land, before she came here at all. Sombra sat regally next to her, his expression mournful, unable to touch anything other than flesh and his own regalia. Sombra found himself unable to use Cadence's gilded hoof file that did look so nice. Why do you call me pink one? Sombra gave her a small smile. The first one that Cadence had seen on the handsome stallion. Even the few surviving portraits of him, while dusty and damaged, did not suggest a stallion who smiled. It is merely my nickname for you. Why do you ask? I've never met a spooky ghost who liked nicknames, I guess. Hmm... I prefer to identify as a not-quite-dead entity. Sounds more dignified, wouldn't you say? That's a dumb nickname, Cadence said from the floor. How long had it been since she said something as silly as dumb? Did you ever have one? Whoa. Oh, was it Shadowy Shadow McShadowson? Or Sombri Zombie Skins Demon? Sombra blinked. Demon, he said flatly. Do I look like some kind of demon to you? Red eyes, yo. It felt good, no, natural, to speak so again. Sombra frowned with slight disgust. Please explain how Sombra and Demon go together. He crossed his ghostly forehoofs, and his expression soured. I am a little insulted at such an accusation. So Sombra is then, Caden said with a giggle, that had waited too long to be. Sombra looked down at the solitary empress sprawled across the floor and listened to her laugh for a moment longer, never averting his eyes. As you wish. So, Sombri, what's your favorite food? Another night of dancing and conversation had Caden sprawled on the ground like an adolescent. I'm dead, Sombra helpfully reminded her. In life, then, sorry about that candied apples. What? 
cadence explained, bolting up. Sombri, you... you have a sweet tooth? I'm dead, he repeated. I had a sweet tooth, pink one. Haven't I earned a better nickname? Empress pink one sounds so foolish. She flopped to the ground again. And these are just... stagnant as lonely as it is. And King Sombri is any better? Sombra's fangy grin gleamed in the moonlight. Okay, so maybe it isn't. Yesterday you said you had an actual nickname. Hmm? How silly. She was talking like a peasant now. Sombra nodded slowly. I did, and then you interrupted me. So, what was it? Sombra peered out at Luna's starry night sky and frowned thoughtfully. I don't think this is the same as the nicknames we give we have given one another, but I was often called a thief. Why? Sombra didn't look at her. <sighs> because I was the greatest thief of all. Cadence levitated a piece of purple glass in the ray of moonlight and beamed at Sombra, who cocked his head to the side and observed the change moonlight, now lighting up the hall that they thought of as theirs, even if it was never said. They never met anywhere else or at any other time of day. So this is a decorative technique, the self technique the use they use in the south. Yes, said Caden, still smiling. And despite the exclusion of crystals, the wealthy often decorate things like this. Yes, Cantalot Castle is full of windows, entire windows like this. Entire windows, you say? The green piece of glass close to Sombra wouldn't budge in any any pointless attempt to pick it up that he made. That sounds impressive. Luxury is something I loved. Cadence couldn't believe that she hadn't realized how fun it had been. How fun it was to do this and began to rummage through the small vase of glass, bits and shells, an old, old gift from a kingdom that collapsed in a time before the first longest night. Wealth pays in, pales in comparison to good company, in my opinion, Sombra said, staring directly at the preoccupied cadence. Wouldn't you say? I couldn't agree more. She still was trying to search for the perfect color to show Sombra next. Quirky things like this weren't Auntie Luna's niche. But she hadn't realized how lonely she'd been, or maybe she had, until she wasn't. Sombra smiled a little. I am a stallion of fine taste, no? Cadence giggled. She wasn't sure why, but she did. For a ghost tyrant, she thought. Sombra to be quite the gentle cold. It almost reminded her of... She didn't let that thought finish, and Sombra's gaze only left her when she looked at him again, holding an azure fragment of glass in her magic. This one is such a pretty color, don't you think? I prefer warmer colors, and isn't that the same one? He nodded to another piece of glass sitting nearby. Cadence followed his motion and as quickly as she could. What? No, that's not the same shade of blue as Flurry's. <gasps> Flurry? Cadence swallowed. E yeah. Flurry Heart. She's my daughter. You live alone, Sombra pointed out. Except for a few servants, yeah, I, I do. They never come to this part of the castle anyway. Even before you showed up, 
and I had them clean only during the day. Do you sleep or something then? Yes, you could say that. I always was a bit of a night owl. And your daughter? She grew up and moved out and has her own kingdom. You know, normal immortal goddess stuff, Kaden said sadly. While Sombra did look concerned, even just a little, Cadence was glad when he decided to ignore that and talk about something else. You were smart not to keep any guard around. I don't think you'd ever need them at your age. Instead of looking down sorrowfully, as Cadence was prone to do whenever social subjects involving other ponies came up, she perked up why? Why? <laughs> Never trust a stallion in armor. Cadence knew Sombra was brooding, but even tempered. He said little with venom. On rare occasions, he was dramatic, but in a way benefiting his background. She did not know him as moody or vicious, and right now, he sounded very vicious. Why? What could you possibly have against ponies who would help you? Didn't you have them when you were king? I did not, Sombra spat. I just told you that they could not be trusted. Is it because you were a tyrant? Was there a rebellion? Cadence's purple-tipped wings flared defensively. No. There was no rebellion, and it has nothing to do with the mistakes that I made then. Then what is it? Cadence couldn't think of the last time she had screamed or demanded anything like this from some pony. Sombra pulled away and stood up. His tone was icy and direct. I had guard. I had guards when I ruled, yes. However, mine were kept in place with the use of some helmets that I'm sure you found in your armories when you took the throne. I wouldn't dare let a single one have a mind of their own after. After what? Kaden said softly. When she saw that Sombra's... Sombra, ghost of the Crystal Palace, was shaking at the thought of something. Nothing, Sombra snapped. It's nothing at all. It's nothing that's ever going to happen again. It's nothing that I'm going to relive. And it most certainly... And it most certainly is not something that I'm going to tell you. Cadence watched him storm away with tears in her eyes. But they were for a different stallion. I'm sorry. Cadence began her apology instantly when she saw Sombra the next night, waiting with an impatient scowl at their hallway. At the same time, she didn't think that he wanted to see her. Are you really? Yes, Sombra. I really am. I, I didn't mean to make you so upset or... or... Natal Goddess Empress of the Crystal Empire... Mia Mori Cadenza sunk to her knees and began to weep. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Did you lose some pony, Sombri? I know what that's like to lose some pony. Just please don't have it be you. Sombri, you're all that lingers. Sombra walked over to her with a calm that Cadence wasn't sure to trust or fear and loomed over her. I lost part of myself. Cadence nodded but shakily and as an expression of sympathy. I don't know what you mean. But, but I won't ask. It's just Sombra kissed her. It was supposed to be simple, 
and it probably looked very simple, but he just bent his head down and kissed her right on her cold, tear-streaked cheek before sitting down on the crystalline floor. My... My husband... Caden sobbed, trying to meet his calm gaze. The hot tears traced down her cheek. Felt like the only warmth she had. When had she become so very cold? Then, when it all happened? After? Gradually? She collapsed and Sombra caught her in an embrace that was colder than death. Cadence would know what a dead pony felt like. Sombra was just as cold. She did not mind. She loved it. Sombra nudged her slightly with his freezing muzzle, and Cadence nuzzled him back once before withering again. He was killed, she said, voice hoarse. Flurry didn't take it well. She was the first natural born goddess, and Sombra, she was so young when it happened. How do you tell a ten-year-old that some pony wanted her daddy dead? That they succeeded? And that he's gone? To this day, I don't know how I did it. Wordlessly, Sombra leaned down to nuzzle her again, and Cadence reached up a forehoof to stroke his fluffy face. No matter how cold he was, she felt comforted for the first time since the slow freeze of everything centuries ago. Everything froze, Sombri. I felt as frozen as a wind ago. I held all the balls and functions, and sometimes I would smile. I smelled so much flurry. And that I smelled so much for flurry. And that's when everything started. Everything began to freeze, including me, and... She didn't need to say any more. Sombra's hug told her that. I miss myself so much. <laughs> as they sat there, moonlight spilling over them as usual, Cadence thought, in her haze of sadness, that this kind of freeze, where she was right here with a pony who only felt cold wasn't so bad and eventually before the night was over she heard Sombra whisper in her ear he wanted to know if she danced with him Cadence nodded and thought a little bit more they talked and laughed in that hallway more with each passing night Cadence brought games and books and chips that only she could eat she moved his chess pieces for him and told him about so-and-so's kingdom and everything she could find on the dramatic arts. Sleep deprivation would take hold. She'd roam the halls with coffee and bags of things she wanted to share and under her eyes. Sometimes she'd fall asleep in the middle of games or reading with Sombra. She really couldn't help it. He still had an actor's heart and his voice brought every word to life Lulling her into, into the sleep, she usually managed to sneak in the day, especially with the help of some sunglasses. She couldn't remember how often she thanked every divine and the heart itself that centuries later, they were still in fashion. Everything was a secret, and what a lovely secret it was. She found herself, and tonight she found their hallway empty. It was a very silly thought, in fact. It was as silly as her eyes watering at the thought of her ghostly lover vanishing like it was all a dream. She called him her true love and only meant it as a half joke. And now, he wasn't there. She ran. She did not see where she ran. She just ran. She ran all throughout the castle where the few staff 
staff who kept to themselves, did their jobs quietly and into parts where no pony but her ever went. And she found him standing atop the highest lonely tower of the Crystal Palace where Twilight Sparkle located the Crystal Heart ages and ages ago. He stood in the noonday sun and smiled at her, rolling his eyes far too dramatically for her to take seriously. And she wept all over again, not because he had left, but because no pony, because like no pony else, he had stayed. Everything around her had changed. The sun was in the sky, stinging her eyes, and the moon below the horizon. The wind whipped around them instead of through the, wa- the window. When he asked her if she wanted to dance, she said yes. The dusty shelves of Cadence's sacred vinyl hall had not heard this much laughter in ages. Between Cadence constantly thinking, thanking the absent Twilight Sparkle for preserving enchantments made to last, and Sombra's colorful reactions to centuries worth, worth of alternative music, the rest of the night sounds of the Empire might as well not have existed. Humming, Cadence flipped a curl of her long mane back and blew dust off one of her treasures. Gosh, I can't believe it's been 123 years since I have, since I gave anything by ro- rodeo head listen. <laughs> Gods, no wonder I've been feeling so pathetic, huh? Pardon. Rodeo head? Just what are all these things? Sombra pointed to a dusty vinyl and squinted at it. Why are the tails referenced in here only nine inches long? It's a it's the band name, Sombri. Think of it as the name of an acting troupe. I see. Was their distinguishing feature their reasonably short tails? Do you want to listen to music or not? Do you know just how impractical it is to have a nine inch tail? Sombra said, raising an eyebrow and giving Cadence a pointed look. She silently wondered two things. The first was whether Sombra didn't like the man the main style of the day. She kissed she had kissed cold. Formerly main styles goodbye and delieved and delved into some old habits. And the second was whether she could listen to an amnesiac or in rainbows first. Hey, Sombri, just how many genres of music did they have back when you weren't dead? I'm debating what we should listen to first. Do lutes count as genre? Cadence calmly placed the two vinyl records she had been levitating down and strolled over to Sombra, radiating a friendliness and spunk that had been only recently returned. Sombri... I love you, but we really need to make sure that you get the best possible experience from all of my vintage vintage stuff. Zombra accepted a peck on the cheek and gave Cadence a weary look. And this is coming from the mare who thought that spraying your fabled main spray directly onto me would make it harder for me to walk through walls. You kept spying on me. I was not, Sombra protested. I happened to want to locate a book you had been reading to be. Seeing as I can't manipulate many objects on my own, and you spray your own husband. 
in the eyes with that ancient styling product. Okay, first, there's no need to be rude. Second, you spooked me. Third, walking through walls all the time isn't nice. I'm dead. I know, but it wasn't like the main spray did anything, right? Cadence beamed innocently at him. It startled me. Sombra mumbled. Yeah, well, marriage is about forgiveness, Sombri. And I'm waiting for that any day now. She winked and placed a kiss on his muzzle. Sombra sighed and smiled. You are going to attempt to keep me here until I know all these distropes as well as you do, aren't you? Oh, you betcha. And that was All That Lingers, written by Ice Star. Now, Repony, I must say this story was quite beautiful. To think a romance could blossom between King Sombra and Princess Cadence. Well, I don't think it's kind of hard to believe. I mean, she's been alone for a long time now. So, finding at least one shred of happiness is all she needed to return back to her former self, and, well, all around, I just love this story. I have to thank Istar for letting me read it. It was so beautiful when I read it myself that getting to read it for all of you just seemed like a natural thing to do. Though I do apologize for all of my mess ups and all of the background noise. My laptop has been giving me a hard time lately. I think it's time I either update the software or just really get a new one. I've had this thing for about seven years now, so it tends to slow down and not want to cooperate with me. And that tends to make my recording a bit harder and sometimes stalls me for days on end. That and the outside noise. <sighs> I'll get this figured out eventually, every pony. But for right now, I want to tell you all that, well, I am going to be doing another reading that I wrote myself eventually. I just hope that this doesn't ruin my career on YouTube. So fingers crossed and knock on wood. <laughs> I am Lotus Moon, and I want to wish you all a good morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are, every pony. Good night.